So hi, welcome back. Uh, this is part three of my series about um, going to federal prison. So uh, I've talked about in my previous video about uh, how, how, what happens when you're first arraigned, um, what bail conditions are like in the federal system. Uh, so if you are not, if you are released on recognizance back into the community, as in you're going back home, um, you're, you're basically going to be doing a couple of things. The first thing is you're going to be working with your probation officer to get a good a handle over what your schedule will be. So whatever it is, whether you're still working and you're doing that, um, all the daily, daily life things that you need to put a schedule out for, like grocery shopping, you know, if you have children taking them to school, um, you know, there isn't as much, uh, you know, time afforded for you to go do things like shopping, like personal shopping, you know, or uh, trips to, to um, an amusement park, you know. Uh, probation is going to be less interested in granting you those activities um, if, for, if, if you're doing those. They're, they're going to primarily just not disrupt, you know, your work, family life, and uh, if you have any other uh, kind of personal spiritual uh, activities that you do. That's what it says in the uh, home confinement or house arrest kind of descriptions. Um, but judges can kind of pick and choose how much they want to take away from you. Now, in my situation... I, I had everything taken away. I was I was under this classification called home incarceration. Literally, I was imprisoned in my own home. Um, but so beyond working with probation to get your kind of uh, for them to know your schedule, um, you're also going to have to do uh, some other things. Like um, one thing it, for my situation, I really uh, focused on was talking to my family. Uh, of course, about, you know, how did my federal case happen? But also, we had talked as a family about whether or not we wanted to recruit um, private attorneys or to go with um, our uh, federal public defender. Now, I I actually liked my federal public defender. He, I thought he was very smart. He performed fairly well in court. Um, my problem was that he didn't seem to get along well with my trial judge uh they were pretty much yelling and screaming at each other during during court uh it wasn't it wasn't the greatest and uh in having a conversation with my family I, i've told them that i think having a female attorney may be more advantageous um whether it's just like you know the psychology of it maybe the judge will treat a female attorney better or not <laughs> but um so we so we talked about that how much it would cost so we had basically i i, I went around asking people in the community who are some uh, good criminal defense attorneys and we we shopped around and we, we came out with a person who we thought could best represent uh, me as a client and of course in the end we chose uh two female attorneys uh from a small practice uh but uh, a specialized practice that I thought could best represent us and um, the prosecutor in my case actually was a woman so I, I thought that having a woman on our side and, and a woman on the other side I, I think at least we could come off even with this particular judge um, so you're gonna be so like I said probation searching for attorney if you can and then the next thing uh, it, it's not really with just fe uh, federal cases, but with any cases. If you are kind of in this legal limbo, every attorney will tell you you're going to have to do some uh, what my therapist calls pro-social activities that can show a judge or a jury that you are not just like sitting around with nothing to do and you're essentially planning your next crime, right? You really can show them that, you know, if, say, for example, you have a drug addiction problem and that is the reason why you got into uh, selling drugs, right? That's a very common situation in, for people in federal cases, then you're probably going to have to get yourself into treatment, whether it's actual detox 
uh, getting into recovery groups or 12 step recovery group NA, um, or going individually and getting into a mental health therapy session, you know, with a psychologist or a, a clinical social worker, whatever it takes. You need to show the judge um, or jury how you have best used your time while on pretrial probation to show that uh, if there are any type of objectional behavior, you know, that contributed to your offenses, that those are minimized as a result of you being voluntarily in treatment. This is absolutely the most important thing. Uh, that you can do as a defendant. You do, it does not require your lawyer to recommend you to do it. The probation probably could uh, recommend some places for you. But I'm telling you now, you must start thinking about where what resources are in your community in which you can access to help with uh, either behavioral therapy, substance use treatment, or actual medical treatment that would show people that you're trying to take care of yourself, okay? So that, and that can happen throughout the process. So from day one, from you are released on bail to all the way to up until the day before your case is heard uh, in, at trial. So remember that this is one of the most essential things that you can do so that um, they, you can actually document all of the efforts you've made, your lawyer will, uh, will document it, other experts will document it, and it will be presented to the judge. And and I will tell you, it does affect how judges will decide in terms of a sentence if you are found, uh, if you do plead out or if you're found guilty. Um, that stuff can be a major mitigating factor to help you get a lighter sentence, okay? So... That's one thing I'm telling you now on, on, on what's really important when you're in this kind of beginning phase. Um, in my next video, I'll talk about something a little bit more specialized, uh, something that you can do. It's called a psychological evaluation. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth than some of the stuff I've talked about today. Uh, so I'm gonna save that for the next video. So come back for part four. So if you wanna hear about what psychological evaluations are and how they're used in federal cases. So uh, if you liked what I talked about today, uh, definitely uh, hit, hit the like button. Uh, if you have any questions about what I talked about today in terms of the, the things that you could do while you're on pretrial, while you're waiting trial, you're uh, definitely leave in the comments and hopefully I can answer them. Uh, if you are, are new to the channel, please subscribe. Subscribing definitely helps my channel, but also click the notifications button so you know when I am going to post any new videos for you guys to watch. Uh, there, I have tons of other series that are going on right now on different topics, so hopefully you'll watch uh, this new video and then check some of my older videos out. Uh, but they generally will all kind of talk about this, uh, my, my own personal experiences of going through the criminal justice system and how, uh, you know, I would like to teach you how to avoid some of the, the missteps that I have made. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.